for Israelis, this fear of a nuclear Iran is neither new nor is it um, a trend in sort of the papers. It is, it is termed often an existential fear, which for Israelis touches on sort of the deepest and uh, most morbid memories, uh, Jewish memories, possibility of Holocaust. Netanyahu, before he was prime minister, said the year is 1938 and Iran is Germany. And this kind of rhetoric for, is, of course, inflammatory anywhere, but for Israelis really is, uh, it's the ultimate rhetorical weapon. You cannot get any more serious than that. And using the existential kind of term, some people, some people even refer to the fact there are, there's some six million Jews in Israel now and they use that rhetorically uh, in, in all those connotations. Just, just to illustrate, five years ago, the most popular television show in Israel, something called Eretz Ne'ederet, uh, A Wonderful Country. It's a satirical show that looks a lot like Saturday Night Live or fake news, news show. They cold opened their season. The whole season was opened with a scene of two of their main, their main characters climbing out of a bunker into a destroyed Tel Aviv. And it was very clearly Tel Aviv. There were street signs and the skyline. And it was obliterated, obviously, by a nuclear bomb. And, and the caption said, Summer 2007. And, um, and then they start in very typical Israeli dark humor about now we're going to do it properly. And you see Ahmadinejad's word. He's good. He's, you know, he's true to his word, not like our people. But this is the way Israelis are thinking about it. If you think about it, this is probably the most popular show, at least a uh, quality show. And this was the opening scene of the whole season. And back in 2007, since then, the rhetoric has only gotten worse. So this, this question is huge. It trumps everything else. It trumps the Palestinian question by far in Israeli psyche today. It trumps the Arab awakening even, which has caused quite a bit of concern. It's the main issue. And yet, when we look at the political scene, this divide, again, looks more like confusion. Because if we try to trace what the camps are, who, who against whom, we don't find the classic right and left. The hawk, at least in the papers today, is Ehud Barak, former prime minister of the Labour Party. Not a great dove by any account, but certainly not... Uh, a son of the, or scion of the right wing. And on the Dover side, we see many people of other kinds. The most vocal, former head of the Mossad, the Israeli equivalent of the CIA, Meir Dagan, certainly no Dove. In fact, an accolade of, uh, or associate of Ariel Sharon, someone much more associated with the center right, very much a security oriented, tough minded kind of individual. He is actually the one most forcefully speaking against the strike, calling it the most foolish idea I'd ever heard, and doing this even at the, the tail end of his term as head of Mossad, who answers directly to Netanyahu, and implicitly, not very implicitly, in fact, quite explicitly, criticizing Netanyahu and Barak, the people, the political leadership in Israel, very dramatic kind of stuff. And so in the leadership, we see this, this strange divide as well, and we see this kind of confusion, and we see uh, a public that is looking to these leaders for cues to what should we think about this very deep threat, and what are the chances of success? And just like the leaders don't know, like Dagan and Barak disagree both with sort of illustrious military backgrounds, but just as they disagree dramatically about the chances of success, so the Israeli leadership just has no clue. 